Hello guys and welcome to this video to talk about the main uh, alterations of the maxillary sinus as seen on radiographs. If you guys don't remember sinus anatomy, for example, or if you guys are in the beginning of the dental course, I will add a link of uh, the, the anatomy of the maxillary sinus uh, on the top right corner of this screen, okay? And if you don't remember how to read CBCT images, I will also add this link on the top right corner of this screen, okay? because we are going to show those cases on 2D and 3D images here. So without further ado, let's start with the clinical case on the letter A, okay? And then we have, of course, a sinus membrane thickening, but now we need to understand if it's tooth related or not, okay? So this is one of the most important questions that we need to make when we are diagnosing the maxillary sinus alterations. And now, of course, it's clearly known that uh, the sinus alteration is basically related to the tooth alteration, okay? So on the letter A, on the top left part of this image, you have the sagittal plane. On the bottom left, you have the axial plane. And on the right side of this image, you have, of course, the coronal plane, which is now acting as a cross-sectional image as well. So giving buccal and lingual dimensions for us, okay? Now we can see that the red arrow of this image is showing a periapical lesion, okay? So well-limited, uh, homogeneous, round, symmetric, okay? So this was actually a cyst which pushed up the sinus floor, okay? But even created some failures in the sinus floor. And now this periapical lesion is in continuation with the sinus membrane, okay? And of course, as a result, we have sinus membrane thickening, all right, so that's the alteration that we have here. So those are uh, examples of sinus opacification. So most of the sinus alterations will be sinus opacifications, okay? Uh, now on the letter B, we have a different type of sinus opacification. The line of the opacification is now flat, showing that that's liquid, okay? So that's usually acute infection on the sinus, okay? So the alteration is on the left uh, side of your screen, which is the right side of the patient. Don't forget about this, right? And in the right side of this image of the letter B, you guys are seeing the coronal uh, plane showing the flat level, okay, of the opacification, right? Uh, you can see the posterior anterior extension of the sinus opacification on the axial plane. Don't forget that we can compare both sinus dimensions on the coronal plane as well. So this is very useful. We should do that always and assess the osteum. Okay, so the opening from the maxillary sinus to the nasal cavity, which is in the upper part of the wall of the medial wall of the sinus, which is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Don't forget to take a look at this recommended reference, but we have now more cases. Okay, so case C is just showing to you guys a normal maxillary sinus, but with the sinus septa. Okay, septa is the plural, septum is the uh, uh, singular. So we have, of course, a bone septum. It, this, it has, this is a sinus variation, so it can be present or not. And we see this in a 2D image like this OPG uh, with this W shape. Okay, so the W shape showing us that there is a bone septum there, okay? Uh, uh, this would be a normal uh, or at least average sinus dimension, but then on the letter D, we have a totally different situation. Of course, I guess you guys already realized. We have the edentulose arch leading us to an increased volume of the sinus, okay, due to sinus pneumatization, okay? So what is sinus pneumatization? is the increased pressure that happens inside the antral cavity, so inside the antrum, leading to this increased volume of the sinus, okay? Which happens along with bone loss of the alveolar crest. And now take a look at this. You have the alveolar crest matching the location of the sinus floor. So now they are the same thing, basically, on the 2D image at least, meaning that we don't have any alveolar bone left, for example, if you wanted to place dental implants, okay? I will even add the link of the CBCT implant planning steps if you guys are in the beginning of the dental course as well. All right, and just for us to finish, let's see uh, two more cases here. 
and then take a look at this. This is very uh, important. I'm going to do a video only about this type of cases, which are foreign bodies on the maxillary sinus. Okay, so the foreign body on the letter E is being detected uh, by the this hyperdense image. Okay, on this axial plane, of course. The hyperdense image is on the left maxillary sinus. I hope you guys realized when I say hyperdense, I mean radiopaque, but that's 3D, that's CBCT. We just say hyperdense. And the image is, is round, it, sort of, is a, a, a fragment of a tooth that was displaced by another professional into the maxillary sinus during an extraction of an impacted premolar. Okay, that's actually what happened here. And now the, we located, of course, the, the tooth close to the buccal surface, okay, so close to the buccal plate of the maxillary sinus. And then, of course, we know that we can open a flap and just uh, uh, open a window in this lateral wall or buccal wall of the maxillary sinus to retrieve the fragment of the tooth, okay? Uh, on the letter F, you are seeing the, the most common, or at least one of the most common alterations for the maxillary sinus, which is the anthropseudocyst, okay, or uh, mucus uh, retention cyst, there are other names, but that's just the dome-shaped lesion. The radiograph is the sole diagnosis required for that, you don't need to do biopsy, okay, and uh, the other case, so we have a 2D image of a case, and then we have another case on the right side of your screen showing an anthropseudocyst in 3D, okay, and you can still confirm the dome-shaped lesion on the CBCT as well, okay? So that's actually very, very important here. Let's see another case now, which is a, a sinus bone failure, okay? And now I'd like to recommend my own article about this. It's very important for you guys to learn sinus anatomical variations, okay? The letter is E again, that, that's actually, this is supposed to be the letter the, uh, F or G, so it doesn't matter. But we have, of course, the failure of the sinus floor due to the uh, dentalism. Okay, so there was no teeth there on the arch and then bone loss is happening along with sinus pneumatization and now you have the uh, failure of the sinus floor. Okay, of course, for a sinus lift procedure, which is actually what you guys are seeing on your screen, uh, you, we need to detect this failure and then we need to, uh, to place a collagen membrane to close this failure before we place the grafts. Okay, so... Uh, the sinus membrane is already lifted, but then we are now just detecting the failure to place the collagen membrane before then we can place our synthetic particulates, uh, at least in this case it was the used, the bone ceramic from Strauman, uh, the, the gra grafts, right, to, to perform the sinus lift procedure or sinus floor augmentation, okay? Very good, and then just for us to finish, uh, other types of diagnosis here. So letter F, you guys can feel free to pause the video and try by yourself to diagnose. Okay, I'm recommending this book, um, amazing by Do uh, Prof. McDonald from Vancouver. Uh, we have on the letter F a mucosal, a sinus mucosal, which is not like the mucosal of the oral cavity. Mucosal of the sinus is an invasive lesion, aggressive lesion. And then you guys are seeing the invasive pattern towards the nasal cavity, and towards the lateral direction as well, upper and even lower directions as well, okay? Uh, we have on, on the bottom left of your screen a case of squamous cells carcinoma, okay? So why we suspect of malignancy here, and that's of course medical CT. We are seeing that there are no well-defined limits here and there are other characteristics, okay, the aggressiveness and everything that we are going to comment in a future video about malignant tumors, okay? And then uh, on the bottom right side, uh, we have just a 2D image, that's a water's projection image, okay? So just the posterior anterior method for sinuses of the face. And then, of course, I hope you guys realize that the acute infection, so of the sinus is on the right side of the patient, okay? So the right maxillary sinus is opacified. And I hope you guys realize that. So if you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys in the next videos.